You haven't heard it yet, but I've spoken. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Review. Today, we're taking a look at the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series uh, Wave 3, Wave 28, Wave 38, something. It just depends on where you look. But the big thing here is it's another wave of Star Wars figures. Yeah! Woo! I love a new wave of Hasbro Star Wars Black Series, especially when it has to do with the Mandalorian. And then for Dark Ray, it's from Rise of Skywalker. I'm not gonna hold it against her because I like the design. I mean, and in my head canon, it might've went that direction because it's my toys. I can do whatever the hell I want. But because I got the wave all at the same time, thanks to Alex on Instagram, you know who you are. I'm gonna take a look at all of them at the same time because once I open one, I wanna open all of them. It's kind of like Pringles. Once you pop, you can't stop. And I need all these on the shelf. Looking at the package, it's that new design where they've color coordinated to the series or movie the character comes from. And for Moff Gideon, Quill, and Grief Karga, they're all from The Mandalorian. And then Rise of Skywalker gets this nice pastel blue. Get some artwork on the end of the package showing the character and hmm, do these go together did i just happen to put those N no <laughs> that's backwards there we go we get that mural style picture on the end that i'm hoping that someday hasbro puts into poster form because i haven't been saving the packages i'm a bad collector on the back the same pictures but we also get a little bio of the character in several languages we get down to the bottom attention warnings figure and two accessories or however many accessories but the big thing is don't put them in your mouth. On the other side, I miss the big fonts, but we get some Star Wars logos, we get the colors, we get more window. On the top, yet more window. On the bottom, here's your legalese, your barcodes. But let's get these open, see what's going on here. And we'll start with Ray. And not because I hate Rise of Skywalker or anything like that. It's just that Mandalorian's fresh on my brain. I'm hoping that hood fits on better than it did in the package. And it looks just like in the movie. It's a dark version of Rey. But in the movie, you don't get a super close look at it, so it's nice to see all the details of the costume. And it's essentially Kylo Ren wraps in female form. Here's how far I have my head up the Mandalorian's butt. This texture, when I first looked at it, I was like, oh, that's kind of like Beskar. And that's the whole thing. Sleeves, top, bottom dress part. And you would think it traffic cones, but it's split down the sides. Not the softest material, but it does get out of the way. And that shows that same material on legs <laughs> and well, down to some shoes. Essentially, her whole body is covered in this. There is the thick belt that is smooth and has a different gloss to the black. But other than that, you think it's pretty plain, but at the same time, it's fitting, I think. Cloth cape, a nice light material that drapes naturally. It does look just a bit flat whenever it's just laying behind her, but... Maybe you can wet it, get some wrinkles into it, get some flow to it. The hood coming up over the head, same material all the way around. I like the look of it, but it kind of fishbowls. It's that Bandai, well, essentially most Kylo Ren figures we've gotten with a hood, with a plastic hood. It likes to float up above the actual head. Looks good when it drapes down on the sides, but it gives some space around her face. There's some pegs holding that in, well, was supposed to be holding that in. And I'm guessing there's another peg in the back holding it on. But then under that is Ray's face, and it's a nice photo reel. It's not as nice as Island Journey, which is my favorite, but it's still a good likeness. There's that new shininess we've been seeing a lot to the photo reel lately. It makes her look a bit sweaty. But this is Evil Ray, Dark Ray. She's allowed to be sweaty, I guess. Can't tell, is this reuse? That hair looks familiar right there. It's not that Island Journey Ray. There it is. It's that last Jedi Ray. Does she have the things on the back of her head? Yep, she has the triple ponytail back there but it looks like they tweaked the photo reel to have angrier eyebrows. That's probably the reason why she doesn't have the teeth showing through either. That was the biggie for me. I would have loved to seen that on the action figure. Going over articulation, again, the hood is attached to the torso, but under there is the standard Hasbro, is that the new dumbbell joint up there? But she can look up inside the hood. She can look down. You can swivel it side to side. I wish that was a different setup. Again, that may be a play day type thing. Try to get this down and around. Butterfly joint at the shoulder that goes forward and back. The shoulder hinges up, rotates all the way around. Hinges swivel at the elbow comes up. Oh, well, past 90. Rotates. Hinges swivel at the wrist. It does go side to side for a lightsaber holding hand, but okay. Ball joint at the waist 
can get some hula hoop out of it. There is ball joints coming out to the hips, can come forward, not much back. Out, oh yeah, not terrible. Swivel at the thigh, nicely hidden within the grooves of that texture. Hinge and swivel at the knee, exposes the hell out of that disc right there. But it comes up slightly past 90, and then that goes side to side. Hinge at the ankle goes, whoa, all the way back. That much back only gets you that much forward though. And then forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, she comes with her swing out lightsaber that you can use either in the double blade position or it does have a hinge right here where you can swing it out to the Darth Maul position. The blades are removable, but don't twist them. You want to pull straight out because the blade itself is molded to the shape of the hilt. It has that high side right there that has to go in that position. And on the hilt where we usually see silver, it's a goldish color. But then you have some reds, some grays. The hinge does stick out slightly, but in order to make this work in toy form, in this scale, they had to do what they had to do. I have noticed opening and closing it a couple times, it gaps up a bit. Oh, it does come apart. So if you want to double blade it or something, that is an option, but it also pops back together. Is there anywhere to store the saber? No, no hooks, no plugs, no nothing. Oh, I went to put the lightsaber in her hand and I realized there's a ring on her index finger on the left. Little dash of red, but a nice little detail against all the just black cloth here. That does look good. Ray stands at about five and seven eighths to the top of the hood, and I'm guessing about five and five eighths to the top of her head, which falls right in line with the rest of the Hasbro Star Wars Black series, The Last Jedi figures like Ray and Kylo Ren. For the Mandalorian figures, it's hard to pick an order, but let's open up Moff Gideon first. Let's see if the old pull straight out of the package trick works. Cape is separate, that's cool. Much better than trying to pull this thing through a hole. I like that. And it goes right back in, good as new. Mint in package there. Oh, it's so good. And it's some new engineering, or well, not some new engineering, but it's so well implemented here. Got the armor on the upper body, beautiful black shiny sheen to show off, hey, it's gonna protect him from blaster fire, right? But on top of that, some nice painted detail, the reds, the grays, the whites. Well, that may be a little bit messy, is it? actually sculpted in there. But then there's reds up here on the shoulders too, kind of Eplet's look. That red travels down around the belt piece, which is completely separate. So if you want to get crazy with the legs, it does ride up and out of the way from those just in case. But you can also let it ride down just a bit. The baggy pants with the nice wrinkles add some detail to it. There may be a slight texture. For me, the eye-catching thing is the red stripe down the side. It comes down to the boots. It's hard to see the details because it's all the same sheen, but there are some straps running across the front here. Same thing down on the feet. Just little details. Well, hell, I didn't see them on the show, so the action figure gets us a look at what's actually there. The sleeves are the same as the pants, just a nice realistic look to them, but again, that red stripe coming down, it is sculpted in, but the paint on top of that follows it really nicely. The gloves is where we see a pattern. Well, there's the belt too, so it kind of matches side to side. There's horizontal, vertical, it kind of mixes and matches. It's a neat little thing that, I, again, I've never noticed before. On the back, pretty much the same thing, just less detail because it's the back. Get up to the head and it's a great lightness when you're looking at it as an action figure at a distance, you know, it's standing on the shelf. You get right up on it and that's when it kind of, is there something off? Is there something weird? Again, with the shininess that shouldn't be there, I may try to hit all these with a dull coat at some point. It's definitely Gideon. If you pop this head off, it, you know what body it goes to. It just has that, you know, action figure feel to it. My big thing here when I got it out of the package were the shoulder pads. And I thought there is no way in hell that's going to allow the shoulder to raise up. But like we've been seeing with troopers and a lot of armored characters, they glued it just at this point down here. Well, it's actually tabbed in and it is a soft material like the lower tunic. You can peel up and over and that's the biggie right there. Right here, it looks almost seamless. In fact, that looks fantastic. But you go to raise it and it almost pops itself on top of that torso armor and you can raise the arm to about right there, which isn't all the way up to 90, but that's impressive, especially the way this sinks right back down. Oh, in fact, I went to grip this in order to move the neck around and this whole armor piece is a separate piece. It's glued down right here at the shoulders. Everywhere else, it's a loose... I wonder if there's a uniform. There is a uniform under there. There's more body with texture. Oh, that just means I need another Gideon. Do some slicing, see what that actually looks like. For articulation, there is the dumbbell joint at the top of the neck, but a ball joint down inside the collar. Can look 
up, shift forward and look down. Well, it wants to move back up a little bit down. There's some tilt, some tilt. Am I just rotating that or is it actually? Yeah, there's tilt. Standard shoulder, we already talked about that. That thing pops up, gets up to about right there. Rotates all the way around. Hinge and swivel at the elbow comes up past 90, then rotates. Blaster holding hand is hinged up and down. So yeah, I like that. Then that swivels. Hula hoop action in the mid torso gets you a fairly nice range. Ball joint at the hip comes up, goes back. Whoa, that's impressive. Goes out, swivel at the thigh, hinge and swivel knee, baggy pants, boot sculpt. It goes to 90 and then side to side. Not a lot of butt kicking in Star Wars reviews these days. Ankle hinges back, hinges well, a little forward and then forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, Gideon comes with this cape. It's the same texture as the rest of the uniform. The inside is painted red. There's nothing to come up over the shoulders, which throws me off for a minute. Let's see how this pegs in. Well, that's fairly tight. It's not just gonna fall off, but I like how it doesn't interrupt anything on the front. I don't know how that works in real life, but here it seems like it just drapes over the shoulders a bit. It's very regal, but if you're gonna want action poses, yeah, this isn't gonna get out of the way. This is just a slab laying on his back. There's a blaster included, fairly small, and the details are there. Nah, I was gonna say not a lot of paint, but I don't think there's any paint to this. Works really well in hand, but if you're wanting to just store it away, it goes in the holster, scope and all. Then of course there is the dark saber. I like the sculpt to the hilt. It's nice and detailed. I fairly accurate from what I remember, but it's the blade that throws me off. It just doesn't have a lot of pizzazz to it. It is a translucent plastic and then a black stripe painted up the middle, but there's no electrical feeling to it. it when I think of the dark saber, I think of like white lightning shooting through that black part. I do like how the translucent material, if you were to light it right, it looks like it's on fire outside that black core, but mm, it just doesn't have the same effect. <laughs> Oh, and the blade does come out. I, I was pulling and I wasn't sure there for a minute. I was like, oh, I'm breaking this. But yeah, you can have just the hilt if you want. And of course, that goes into his hand. Again, that works really well with the up and down articulation to the wrist. Gideon is a badass. Gideon stands at five and five eighths inches tall, which does seem a little bit small, especially when I stood him next to the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Incinerator Trooper and the first couple of episodes Mandalorian. I didn't realize Esposito is actually five foot seven. <laughs> this almost looks like a different scale, but that's right. That's accurate. Next up, let's open up Quill. Oh, and the art on the side of the package with the blurg. That would have been a nice two pack or a deluxe pack or something. I would have bought a couple of those, put a Mandalorian on one, but I totally expect that in the next year or so because it's too sweet to pass up. Right, Hasbro? Right, Hasbro? Is it crazy that this is our first official Ugnaught in the Star Wars Black Series line? And this year being the 40th anniversary of Empire Strikes Back. But I'm not gonna complain. This is Quill. It goes with the Mandalorian shelf. I am willing to wait for more Ugnaughts. But look at all the different textures here. The scarf has kind of the spider web effect going on. I, it's the material that it's made of. The outer vest or shirt or tunic or whatever, slight detail, just enough to make you think, oh, that's not just a flat plane. I don't know why I just explained texture. It makes it not flat. Same thing with the sleeves, but nice grooves, nice wrinkles, this strap. Leather-like effect for the gauntlets. It's got these X's in it and these straps, and I would have liked to seen a bit more paint detail there, the silver for the buckle. I don't know what that design is, but that's cool. For the pants, there's this pocket flap and more texture and more seams coming down to the boots that has a flap that lays over the foot. And look, they left the front all free to articulate really far forward, probably for some stirrups, for something that he rides on or something. Who knows? There's even a cracking effect, like it's aged. The belt piece that has the lower part of the tunic has, is this a pouch of some kind? Yeah, there's a strap coming up. Not painted on the buckle thing right there. Same thing on the other side. In fact, it looks completely opposite. Same sculpt, just opposite. And then this backpack has all kinds of texture, some stripe detail going across, little canister hanging off, or what's this? Is this a big bullet? Again, little details not painted. You gotta kinda go looking for them. That is part of the scarf that hangs around his neck. So it's loose and it gets out of the way when you wanna articulate the waist, but it also kinda pulls back on the head. In fact, you push it up to where the scarf is actually supposed to be on the body. Once you get going, it'll work its way down and back. But even if you pull it all the way back, 
where the scarf is right up under the head. It doesn't look terrible. You see the gap and then you just push back down. But ooh, up at the head, there's those eyes peering out from the Ugnaught features. There's some gray on the beard, the mustache, the eyebrows. The helmet top thing has a nice silver detail on the ears, has some slots so he can actually hear. And then goggles with some more silver detail. It looks like a separate piece. I went to push it down a minute ago and I, they don't push down, but the hat does come completely off. So if you are thinking of some Ugnaught customs or something, here's more possibilities. Got the balding head, some more gray hair around the back. He's aged, he's old, he's done his time. He deserves a break today. I like the little pointy ears. Going over articulation, there seems to be one of them dumbbell joints up in the top of the neck going into the skull. Can look up, can get the scarf out of the way does look a little bit down. Look at that tilt though. Just look at it. Swivel. Shoulder has this extra sculpt detail on top, but it does hinge up to 90. Swivels all the way around. Hinge and swivel at the elbow comes up to, well, almost 90. Rotates. Trigger finger hand, but it is hinged side to side. Oh, Hasbro, you failed me. Then there's swivel. Some ball joint at the waist. Not a huge amount of movement. Ball coming out to the hip goes forward. Yeah, back in a little bit. Out. Doesn't win the wave, but that's not bad. Swivel at the thigh. Hinge and swivel at the knee comes up. Oh, past 90. That's further than Gideon. Swivels. Hinge at the ankle goes back a bit. Goes forward quite a bit and then forward facing pin for rocker for accessories quill comes with this well this backwoods shotgun looking blaster some nice detail to it a little bit of paint just some gray some green i can't tell which is the plastic color i'm guessing it's the green and i'm just now realizing the strap is also a separate piece can you take that off oh yeah well can't get it over the sight but i guess you can put it over the shoulder have him stored away out the back fingers are fairly soft so you can pry him out he's not gonna be aiming down it or anything but he can shoot from the hip i think oh that's a pain in the ass to get in both hands but it can be done there you go it's not really a shooting pose but he can hold it quill stands just slightly under five inches tall here he is with the hasbro star wars black series first and part of second episode mandalorian and then cara dune and then the bandai sh figure arts beskar mandalorian and ig11 finally let's take a look at grief karga <laughs> Mando. And man, it's good to get a Carl Weathers on my Star Wars shelf. Hasbro did a fantastic job of translating his costume, well, or his clothes, <laughs> I guess they would call it in Star Wars land, into plastic form. Again, with all the tiny little textures that help bring a realistic look to an action figure, a toy. Especially in this scale, they may exaggerate it a bit, but it totally works for what they're going for. Slightly different texture to the different materials. Again, just like we saw with other characters in this wave, but it just helps differentiate. Besides the colors, of course, it's a nice contrast between the materials. And I don't know where this whole half costume, half jacket thing started. I seem to remember it from Solo, but it's not a bad look. It just throws me. Awesome sculpt detail to the belt along with some gold just to punch it up a bit to make it stand out. That belt is a separate piece that comes down to these holsters. The straps around the legs are also separate pieces. Again, even though the pants are the same color as the upper body, different texture. Just so much stuff thrown in there when you start looking up close. Down at the boots, rugged looking, the straps coming around the top. The gloves almost have a quilted crisscross mattress pattern to them which is again one of those details you don't actually see in the show or if you're not looking for it but then you get it in action figure form and boom there it is like i mentioned this half jacket the strap comes around under this arm attaches to the other side i don't think it's pegged anywhere i think it's just holding itself on it looks like it's all one big molded piece so it may be a bit hard to remove if you wanted to take it off. At the same time, it is fairly soft. It does get out of the way. It doesn't traffic cone because it doesn't go all the way around the body. He's just not going to be sitting in any speeders or anything. Then getting up to the head, again like Gideon, I totally see the likeness here. If I saw this head in a box, I would know that's Grief Karga. That's Carl Weathers. But at the same time, there's something slightly off. I don't know if there's a thinness to the mustache and eyebrows or... Mm, yeah, it's hard to pinpoint. And then of course there's the shininess. Although he has a lot of layers on he would be sweating, right? Ma'am, maybe, but I'm still gonna try to dull this down a bit. Wish there was a slight wash to the hair to bring out that detail, but again, at the same time, I, it's unmistakably grief carga. Going over articulation, there's your dumbbell joint up at the top. I think it is. It, these heads don't pop off like the old ones do, but I think that's what's up there. And then there's a ball joint down at the bottom of the neck. Can look up, can look down. Tilt. Swivel, hard to see on the half jacket side, but there is a 
butterfly joint hidden under there, which makes me think that this is an overlay again because this is soft. Crazy Hasbro. It does go forward, does go back. Shoulder on a hinge comes up to 90. Swivels all the way around and again, that gets up and away, no problem whatsoever. Hinge and swivel at the elbow comes up slightly past 90, and then that rotates. Blaster blast and hands, they are hinged up and down, which is good. Swivel. Ball joint at the waist, but doesn't like to go forward. It goes way back. Some tilt, some tilt. Hula hoop action, rotation. Ball coming out to the hip comes forward. The holster is a softer material, does not get in the way. Back, out. It's hard to declare a winner of this wave, but that's not bad at all. Swivel at the thigh. Hinge and swivel at the knee only comes up to 90. Then that's side to side. Hinge at the ankle goes back quite a bit. Goes forward. Oh, yep, that wins the wave. I bet he could ride a blurg better in Quill. And then forward facing pin for Rocker. For accessories, Karga comes with two of his blasters. And this is what he used to add the end of season one. I'm not sure about season two, but that was also a different costume. Some brown paint for the grip, but otherwise it's just in the gray plastic. Both left and right are trigger fingers, so he can just gunsling with the best of them. Or, like I've shown several times, he has holsters on both hips. Grief? That sounds weird saying just grief, but <laughs> Karga stands at six and a sixteenth inches tall. Here he is with the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Cara Dune and Episode One Mandalorian. And then the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series Beskar Mandalorian and the Incinerator Trooper. Here's the three Mandalorian figures from this wave all together again. <laughs> That kind of throws me off, but it is accurate. That's scale. So when the dust settles, <laughs> more fine additions to my Star Wars shelf. And that's always a good thing. I can't pick a favorite here, but I will say I prefer the Mandalorian figures. Nothing against Dark Ray. I love the concept and I dig the look, but the figure kind of falls flat. But oh, Grief Karga getting him just standing beside Mandalorian so he can just Mando all day. That's amazing. Same with Quill. He can give Din a hard time standing on the shelf. But the worst time given for Mandalorian would probably be Moff Gideon, of course. I wish there was a bit more dirtiness to it like we see in the series, but at the same time, I, they're excellent action figures. Good likenesses, fantastic details. You can't ask for more for 20 bucks. And that's a hell of a deal for action figures of this quality. I mean, these are at Walmart, they're at Target. You can pre-order them online, Dorkside Toys, Hasbro Pulse, Big Bad Toy Store, and again, 20 bucks, that's insane. Yes, they're cutting back on articulation a bit, trying to make up for the fantastic photo reel, but yeah, yeah. What else can I say? So if you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. There will be some fixing done though. I have been dull coding the photo reels on recent figures like the indoor heroes. It, it just makes them slightly better. I don't know if they're adding the gloss on purpose or if it's just part of the printing process. I don't know. But Ray, like I said, I like this design. I want to fix that hood. I want to make it look better. Play day.